Storm Claudia has left entire cities underwater. The UK and Portugal have not just been hit. They have been overwhelmed. Cars vanish in seconds. Rivers overrun their banks. Coastlines hammered. A tornado rips through Portugal. Homes stripped open. Sirens racing to rescues. Power cut. More than a thousand emergencies in a matter of hours, and shelters already overflowing. But in the chaos, new dangers are still rising. What is failing behind the scenes? And could the next threat be even closer than we think? Rescue teams hauled inflatable rafts through black water, headlights flashing against submerged cars. Rescuers moved from one house to the next, navigating currents and jammed doors to reach families on the Riverside Estate in York. They carried people through chest-deep water. Radio logs counted more than 1,000 emergencies in a single day, each a scramble against time, as floodwater rose one meter in 15 minutes. Elderly residents were carried out wrapped in blankets. Children were lifted from windows as water surged through ground floors. In Setabal, nearly 200 responders rushed to 43 separate flooding calls before dawn, wading through streets where storm drains erupted and homes filled like bathtubs. Hospitals from Monmouth to Lisbon filled with the injured, trauma from debris, hypothermia, and broken bones. A sudden spike in Monmouth's casualty log forced ambulances to reroute. Rescue teams relayed patients by boat when roads disappeared beneath the river. Shelters filled with families clutching bags and pets, the air thick with exhaustion and fear. Civil protection volunteers checked names against soaked lists, searching for those still missing. Some people were undocumented, found only when volunteers posted photos on social media. In the chaos, medics worked by torchlight, triaging children shivering in borrowed coats. A survivor from York whispered, they were soaked to the skin, but never hesitated to come back for my father. Each face, rescued or rescuing, became a record of a night when ordinary lives were swept into crisis. The numbers kept rising, each one a story carried through the flood. In Setabal, emergency teams scrambled to manage more than 40 separate flooding crises as the water rose in the early hours. Nearly 200 responders moved through the city, dividing their forces between submerged roads, garages filling with runoff, and elevator shafts transformed into vertical rivers. With every call, the pressure built. Civil protection workers set up temporary shelters in schools and community centers, but each new family meant fewer empty beds and less food to go around. There was no official overflow, but the system was stretched to its edge. Volunteers logged arrivals by flashlight, scanning soaked ID cards and searching for missing names. Across Lisbon, entire neighborhoods slipped into darkness as the grid failed. Power loss cut off heating and left hundreds relying on battery lamps and borrowed blankets. In some districts, blackouts lasted through the night, with only the blue strobes of emergency vehicles to break the gloom. Hospitals switched to backup generators, rationing power between trauma wards and communications. Along the Douro, outreach teams from local NGOs tried to reach camps and riverbank settlements, many undocumented or without phones. With bridges underwater and roads blocked, some were left waiting for hours, their only link to help a photo posted by a volunteer online. Field reports from the Douro described gaps in the safety net, families missed by official counts, language barriers slowing intake, and shelters that could not promise a bed for everyone. For the most vulnerable, rescue came down to luck. A stranger's call, a found address, a place on a crowded floor. Even as the rain slowed, the demand for aid kept rising, exposing every weakness in the emergency response. At 2.17 in the morning, the A379 bridge outside Plymouth gave way. CCTV captured the center span crumpling into black water. 50 vehicles were left stranded on either side, headlights flickering in the downpour as the only safe route south vanished in seconds. Emergency crews rerouted ambulances and launched rescue boats, but the detour cost precious minutes. Municipal engineers reviewing maintenance logs had flagged the bridge for reinforcement. Work was scheduled for late autumn, but it was postponed after a budget reshuffle. Now the collapse forced a rapid audit of every crossing in the floodplain. In Lisbon, storm drains buckled under the onslaught. Maintenance records showed overdue upgrades and warnings left unheeded. Water burst through street grates and surged into ground floor flats, overwhelming pumps designed for storms half this size. Engineers traced the backlog to blocked culverts, a problem noted in city council reports for years. Madeira International Airport suspended all flights as runways vanished beneath standing water, leaving travelers stranded in dimly lit terminals. 
Across southern Wales, rail lines disappeared under flood water, and crews were dispatched to inspect embankments for erosion. Each choke point exposed a system stretched thin. Bridges, drains, and rails were all tested by a storm that found every weak link. The impact is wide-reaching, and recovery will be measured in weeks and months. A stalled jet stream locked rain bands over Portugal and the UK, trapping the storm's core above the same regions for hours. Met Office synoptic charts showed the jet diverging just west of Iberia, steering Claudia's heaviest rain directly into urban centers. At sea, Atlantic surface temperatures ran 1 to 2 degrees Celsius above average. NOAA anomaly maps lit up the coastline, signaling a deeper moisture reservoir than usual. That extra heat meant every cloud carried more water, and when the storm arrived, it unleashed up to 150 millimeters of rain in less than a day. Animated rainfall accumulation graphics from both national agencies confirmed local peaks. Lisbon gauges hit 150 millimeters. Monmouth gauges reached nearly 120 millimeters. The ground, already saturated from earlier autumn storms, could absorb nothing. With nowhere to go, water rushed into rivers, drains, and streets. In Portugal's south, IPMA radar captured a rare tornado signature. A sharp burst of wind shear mapped as a twisting red core near Faro, and that set the stage for a funnel cloud to touch down. Each of these factors, the jet stream stall, record warm seas, extreme rainfall, and sudden wind shear, combined to overwhelm every local forecast and defense. The science was clear. Claudia's violence was no accident. It was the result of an atmospheric chain reaction that left no margin for error. Forecast models now split the days ahead into three paths. The most likely, at 70%, shows rivers finally falling. Water gauges in Monmouth and Lisbon have started to drop. Sun breaks through in scattered patches, and cleanup crews fan out across muddy streets. Emergency alerts ease as rainfall tapers off, giving battered towns a fragile pause. But agencies warn that a second scenario, with a one in five chance, could unfold instead. New rain bands are possible, the ground is still saturated, and even a short burst could send river levels climbing again. Radar loops from the Met Office and IPMA track every cloud, searching for signs of a return. In this case, secondary flooding could force new evacuations, close airports, and keep shelters crowded for days longer. A final, less likely scenario, just 10%, looms at the edge of the forecast. A fresh Atlantic low, forming over warm seas, could drag more moisture toward the coast. If pressure drops and warnings flash red, Claudia's aftermath could turn into a second assault. Every spike on the river gauges, every alert from dam operators, is watched for signs that the worst is not over yet. Red flags first. A sudden spike of more than one meter at the Teddington gauge triggers a major incident for London. Environment agency protocols shift instantly. Crestuma Lever Dam on the Douro hits its alert threshold if upstream flows approach 8,000 cubic meters per second. When this happens, EDP issues a release warning, sending SMS alerts and activating sirens along the riverbank. New Met Office red warnings for rainfall or rapid tornado formation from IPMA mean conditions can turn dangerous within minutes. Flash flood alerts follow any rainfall exceeding 30 millimeters per hour in already saturated districts. If a radar gap appears where satellite or ground coverage misses a storm cell, authorities increase patrols and keep response teams at the ready. Dam operators and hydrologists monitor for spillway-only releases, a step not yet triggered but always minutes away in a rising river. Green flags matter just as much. Rain gauges showing a steady drop for two hours signal that floodwaters may finally be receding. Dam operators confirm no further releases are planned when upstream flows stabilize. The lifting of active red or orange warnings by the Met Office or IPMA means the worst is likely over, but only if rainfall bans stay clear. Local agencies downgrade alerts when live data confirms the threat has passed. Every spike, every alert, every drop in the gauge, each one is a signal. For now, vigilance means survival. Extreme storms like this are no longer rare. Warmer Atlantic waters are fueling a new era of flash floods and tornadoes across Europe. Today's emergencies will be tomorrow's normal. For every community rebuilt, the real test is how we prepare. Because the next storm is already forming.